morning. Welcome to summer school. Are you ready for a field trip? Let's yeah. Go. yeah. Where are we going, Mrs. Nelson? Well, today I thought we would go out and explore woodland habitat. I know we learned that our wetlands are important for both wildlife and people, and how important our prairies are. But what's the big deal with woodlands and forests? That's a great question, Billy. Woodlands are important in many ways. Before we head out, let's talk a little bit about what a woodland is. Woodlands are areas with lots of trees, and sometimes we call them forests. Ah, that's exactly right. It's an area dominated by trees. When early pioneers first came to North Dakota, they saw very few trees. Actually, true woodlands exist in a really small amount of land in North Dakota. How small of an area? I've seen places in North Dakota where we have lots of trees. Well, that's right, Jess. From the pine forest in southwestern North Dakota to the oak and aspen stands in the northeast, certain parts of North Dakota do have a lot of trees. Where in North Dakota can we find different types of trees? Well, that's a good question. American elm and green ash trees grow mostly along the Red River in the eastern part of North Dakota, but they also grow in the woody draws of the Badlands in the western part of the state. Aspen stands are found mainly in the Turtle Mountains and Pemina Hills in the northeastern part of North Dakota. Oaks are found in the Pemina Hills and the Eastern River Valleys. Cottonwoods are found mainly along the Missouri River and the Little Missouri River in southwestern North Dakota. Okay, how about we head out and explore one of North Dakota's wonderful woodlands? Let's yeah. go! What are we going to do first, Mrs. Nelson? Well, first I thought we'd talk a little bit about wildlife in the forest. How do trees benefit wildlife? Yeah, I thought most wildlife liked wide open spaces. Well, most wildlife does prefer wide open spaces, but many depend on these forested areas. Some even prefer certain parts of the forest. What do you mean? Aren't all forests alike? Well, from a distance, they might all look alike, but up close, the forest is made up of many different levels. Oh, I get it. Like some animals might live on the ground and others in the tops of trees. That's exactly right. Maybe it would help if we compared the forest to a tall apartment building. An apartment building has many floors and people live on all levels. A forest is very similar in that it has several layers and there are animals that live in each layer. Many animals use more than one layer. For example, Wild turkeys spend most of their time on the forest floor searching for their favorite foods, insects, berries, nuts, and acorns. But at night, turkeys fly to the tops of the trees to rest. Gray tree frogs prefer feeding on forest floor insects in the shade and protection of trees and shrubs near the water. The shrub layer is also important to a variety of songbirds. They use the shrubs for protection and to build their nests. Moose and deer also use the shrub layer for protection and food. Red squirrels, fox squirrels, or gray squirrels are all found up high near the tops of the trees. The canopy is where they like to build their nests and raise their young. We'll find other examples as we continue our walk. Do we have any assignments or worksheets to fill out? Not today. Today I just want you to take your time and use all your senses. Sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste. Well, maybe let's not taste anything today, okay? <laughs> just to be safe, there are some plants in the forest that are poisonous to people. Let's get going. Hey, do you hear that? Oh look, there's a bird and it's perched by a hole in that tree. Does anybody know what kind of bird that is? Oh, I know. It's a woodpecker. Ah, that's right. Woodpeckers peck holes in trees in search of bugs. This creates a cavity for birds or other mammals like wood ducks, bluebirds, or raccoons to use. Look at that tree. The bark on some of the branches is missing. Maybe it's diseased. Well, it might look that way, but I think another animal's responsible for that. Does anybody have any idea what animal can climb that high up and likes to eat bark? A beaver likes to eat bark, but it's made for swimming, not climbing. Could it be a porcupine? Ah, that's right. Porcupines depend on trees for food. They feed on the leaves and branches for survival. 
Let's get going. Hey, check this out. Ew, what's that? It looks like animal droppings. Cool, could it be an owl pellet? It sure is. Yeah, look at all the tiny bones and gray fur in there. Remember when we dissected owl pellets in class? That's right. I remember when an owl eats its prey. It can't digest everything. They cough up the bones, fur, or feathers, and that's where the pellets come from. I wonder what type of owl made this pellet. Could it be a great horned owl? North Dakota's largest owl, the great horned owl, nests in trees and feeds on rabbits, mice, birds, and skunks that live in woodland areas. A variety of other birds use the woodlands too, like coopers and sharp-shinned hawks, hairy and downy woodpeckers, nuthatches, chickadees, orioles, ruffed grouse, and many others. Look at this log. It has tons of tiny holes and markings on it. There must have been a lot of bugs crawling around here. Look at these pretty flowers and little trees. It would be nice if this log wasn't in the way so more flowers and trees could grow. Actually, downed trees are really important to the cycle of life in the forest. When a tree dies, it falls to the ground and begins to rot. Many insects make that rotting wood their home. The rotting wood also provides nutrients that help give young trees a healthy start. As the sunlight hits the young trees, they begin to grow and the whole growth cycle begins. Trees and green plants produce oxygen, which is essential to all living things. So the forest isn't only trees, but it has lots of plants, wildflowers, and wildlife. That's right. While North Dakota is predominantly a prairie state, its woodlands provide both wildlife and people with wonderful resources. How do trees actually help people? Many years ago, North Dakota's few woodlands played a very important role in the development of our state. Native tribes often establish their settlements in or near woodlands, and early homesteaders use lumber to build their homes, barns, and fences. People today still use lumber for those things and much more. Trees are considered a valuable, renewable natural resource. We also use trees for non-material things, such as shade from the sun, bird watching, and deer hunting stands. My grandparents' farm is surrounded by trees, but they're all in straight rows. They're nothing like the woodlands we're exploring today. Here the trees are all scattered about. What's the difference? It's a great question, Kayla. In the late 1800s, farming had grown on the prairie. The native grasses were planted and plowed into cropland. As the native grasslands were plowed and planted to cropland, more soil was being exposed to the harsh North Dakota wind. The winds blew the topsoil, causing major erosion problems. In order to protect the soil, farmers began to plant large areas of trees and shrubs. These plantings were called shelter belts. Shelter belts reduced wind erosion in the fields and provided sheltered areas for farmsteads and livestock. Some species of wildlife benefit from the food produced by the trees as well as the shelter they provide. Let's keep going, see what else we can find. Check out this awesome stump I found. Ah, cool. Let's all gather around and try and determine how old this tree was before it was cut down. Aging a tree is pretty easy. Each tree has growth circles known as tree rings. One ring indicates one year of life for the tree. Many trees in North Dakota are over 100 years old. With tree rings, you can also tell how wet or dry it was during a certain year by comparing the amount of space between the rings. The more space, the more rain or moisture there was that year, so the tree actually grew more. A small amount of space indicates it was a dry year and tree growth was limited. You can also tell if there was a fire on the land that year because the rings will be abnormally dark. Pretty cool, huh? You can learn a lot more from tree rings than just a tree's age. I wonder why this tree was cut down. Well, like we talked about earlier, people use tree for building, but they can also be used to produce products such as furniture, paper, medicine, makeup, and many other things we use. Cutting down mature trees like this one can provide benefits for people and can also help the growth of the forest. What do you mean? Well, removing a large tree allows more sunlight to reach the forest floor. The sunlight's needed to help smaller trees and plants grow. There's certainly a lot more to woodlands than I ever imagined. You're right, there definitely is. Well, it's getting to be that time again, so let's make one more loop and then head back towards the van. I think when I get home, I'm going to explore the trees in my backyard. 
I want to know what kind they are and see if any wildlife is using them. That's a great idea. Even though we live in the city, there are lots of trees around to explore. They provide beauty, shade, wind protection, and habitat for birds and even squirrels that live in our backyards. Well, let's get going.